like just the MD have just like the MD have have said that because of smuggling into the country, it, it was killing Burela business. And if I can shock you that in Benin, one of the candidates that contested for president in Benin, his main business was was his main business was importation of frozen chicken, and he came third. His main business was importation of frozen chicken, and his target is Nigeria. So you can see how they are how they are killing the broiler business in Nigeria before. But luckily, as well, we have it now. Uh, this government came in, came in, and they took a drastic measure and closed the border. And with a slight market and here and there, people now our populace know that eating frozen chicken, imported frozen chicken, is not even healthy for our life because they use formalin to preserve all those uh, frozen chicken. So they stay in a container. The container come and stay for more than two weeks before they clear it. So, and they're not using refra container, they're using ordinary container. So that means they're using formalin. What they, formalin is what we use to preserve dead body in maturity. So that what they use to preserve the chicken, it's, it's casogenic. So people have known that it is not healthy again. So Borella business is moving now, it's booming. And that why I put here is that Borella farming is a quick and easy way to make money. Borella business farming is quick an easy way to make money. And if you look at it down, Brella Farm is high reward than Leia. It's high reward, it has high reward than Leia, but it has high risk business. It is high risk business. So it's a, it's a two way, it's a two way approach. Please give me two minutes, people are disturbing me. Let me tell them to give me two minutes, I'm coming. <laughs> Sorry, sorry for that. It's my colleague in the office. So sorry. So as I was saying, Borella business is high rewarding, but it has high risk business. It's also a high risk business. It's either way now you, you look at it. So, so people are making money in the business, Borella business. Some farmers are losing money in the Borella business. But this afternoon, what we are looking at is how are we getting the high reward than the high risk in the business? I think that's what we are going to discuss this afternoon. Uh, you can be very successful in Brella business, but all standard procedure need to be in place, such as the infrastructure. You look at the infrastructure, is it okay? Well, I've seen Marina uh, through, uh, the pain, they are very okay, standard for, for Brella operation. Equipment, okay. The quality input, I don't know. But I can tell you that at Marina Farm, infrastructure, standard. Equipment, standard. Quality input, I don't know the feed and other things. I don't know because even the input, also human factor is part of the input. So that one, I don't know. And let, like I used to say in my training, let's all look at the history of Brela genetically. Uh, I used to do, I, used, I, I love this slide. And I, anyway, I go for training for Brela. I used to show this slide. In 1930, I want to also, in 1930, to get two kg brella, it will eat 9.4 kg of feed, and you take 112 days. After 20 years, they work on the brella. And now that to get two kg, instead of 9.4 kg of feed, it now comes down to six kg of feed, and instead of 112 days, it takes 84 days. Then after 20 years again, they work on the genetic of the brella. By 1970, to get two kg of feed, the brella will consume five kg. To, to get two kg body weight, the brella will eat five kg instead of 9.4 and six kg in, 50, in 56 days. After 30 years, which is now, currently now, we don't know what they're going to have, maybe 20 years they're going to decide. But now, currently now, if you eat brella, you get two kg, it takes 40 days, and the brain will consume 3.5 kg of feed. So this, this is the brain business now. If you are if you, if if you are not getting two kg above 40 days, it's a deal loss. 
If you are using 4 kg to get 2 kg, it's a hidden load. Currently now, as a broiler farmer, it's 3.5 kg, 40 days, 2 kg. You make your money, take money in broiler. But anything else above this, you are losing. That's the one. And what are the targets? What are our targets in broiler production? What are our targets? One is live body weight. Your target is to get live body weight. Either at 2 kg in 40 days, and also the feed conversion rate. What is, how many feed did you get that you used to get at 2 kg? It's very important. So farmer may say, that, okay, they can get 2 kg at six weeks, but they use less feed. So people get 2 kg at six weeks, but they use high feed. So it does what you call conversion ration. It's very important. Then minimum mortality. The mortality has to be minimum. The moment a bird after two weeks or after one week, you are getting mortality, that means the cost of that one will spread over the cost of the, the one that you are going to sell. So that one, minimum mortality is very key in broiler business. I have a farmer yesterday in Emo State. They said they want to keep broiler in December. The bird are already 3.5 kg, eight weeks. I told them it's not ideal, but say people, will, people that come from abroad, they would like to buy BB Brella. And they have a mortality four or five a day. So anytime one, and I have based on my calculation, just on feed, anytime they had one mortality, it's additional 41 Naira on top of, on top of the Brella. So if they have two mortality, that is 82 Naira, but they don't know. So these are things that, so this is a target of Brella production, light body weight, feed conversion rate, and minimal mortality. These are things that shall be at the back of a man of any broiler farmer. And like, uh, I used to say in my training, broiler management is like 100 meter race. Like, a, like you're running a 100 meter race. Each second, each second you fall behind, you will never gain it. So broiler business is not like layer business. It's it's, it's like speed that is, you have to go very fast in broiler business. You have to think very fast. You have to work very fast. For every 10 gram you are behind on your body weight by one week, you will be behind by 70 gram at five weeks. Now that uh, Marina Farm is almost one to eight, now if you look at how many grams you are behind at one week, you can now convert that to one. That's the, that's, that's, that's the likely gram you will be behind at five weeks. So if one at the end of the day, you may not be able to make anything from the broiler. Because why? In the broiler production, every hour, every one hour represents 0 0.1 of the broiler chick's life. Every one hour, every hour represents 0 0.1 of broiler chick's life. So in 24 hours period, 2.4 performance can be lost and you don't know. So that's why I used to, I used to say it in my training that when you are raising broiler, don't talk of day, don't talk of week. You have to talk of hours, umbrella, hours, because every hour represents zero point of the umbrella chick's life. I made umbrella producers recognize that. So like I said before, performance loss, the first day of first week will be reflected in the final performance result. I want to understand that one. And in, in, in umbrella, if you look at umbrella, like I said before, please, they are still shouting. Let me talk to them. So two minutes, please. Sorry, so, so. Brella, like I said, is. You don't talk on days or weeks, but hours. If you look at this graph, these 40 days we are talking about is 1,000 hours. That's the life of Brella, it's 1,000 hours. But I can that 1,000 hours convert to days is 40 days. And in Brella business, out of the 1,000 hours, they only need 330 hours of your time. Very crucial. That represents about a 3% of the life of Brella. And that's 
That is most critical. And that is the building period. Once you miss a building period, you have missed umbrella business. So this is why people are making the money. Oh, by the time we go further, you see it. After seven days, really, it is not if the flock will be good or bad. Now that for me, that at after one week, you are getting 129 gram, it is already telling me your performance already. So umbrella, it is after seven days, really, it is known if the flock will be good or poor. So that way, broody is very, very essential. Very, very essential. Look at this diagram. This is such work. Good week performance. See, does it determine? Sorry, oh, sorry, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, wait, sorry. Uh, are we following? Hello? Are we following? Yeah, yes, we are. We are, doctor. Uh, yes, we are. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's, let's all look at good one week performance. I want us to look at this slide critically. It's a research work. And that they call it a rule of thumb. Look at this place rule of thumb. Good preparation. It will give you high one week performance. And that will go to high slaughter weight. Very important. Good preparation. Your preparation in Burela before the bad will arrive is very, very essential. That will give to high one week performance. And that will go to high slaughter weight. And these are the analysis. Every one gram body weight at seven days, every one gram body weight at seven days is plus seven gram at body weight slaughter. What I'm trying to say is that, is that if, like GM say now, the weight of the brain is 40 gram, there is a formula. Then you say 40 gram times 4.5. That is the formula for one week. I will still come to that by the time we go there, you see it. You know, say you, you get, when your birth arrives, just the way we train, uh, we train uh, on the farm on uh, how we assess the day old chicks play. The same thing. You also assess the broiler. The moment broiler arrives at your farm, after you unbox them, please weigh 100. Weigh 100, minimum 100 or 1%. Anything less than 100 is of no use. So you have to weigh 100. And that 100 you are weighing, you weigh it randomly all over the pen, not only one place. Then when you, you now work in bulk 100, then you now find the average. Is the average you, you get now, the standard gorilla is 40 gram to 45. Anything below 40 gram is bad. And that way, as a farmer, if you are really like that and you see it's bad, you can also complain to why you are collecting your DOT. They know that, okay, this farm will, they know what they do. Because if you are not doing like that, they may end up giving you on the edge bad, on the, on the, on the, on the wet bad. So that's why you keep away. When you not do like the way I've said, weigh 100 at different locations on the farm, find the average, and standard is 40 grams, just like GM says it's 40 grams, you now say 40 times 4.5. That will give you 180 grams. That, that's the standard now. So what we are saying here now is that every one gram above 180 is like 7 grams as well. And that's why people are making the money. That means if you get 180, if you get 181, that one gram extra is like seven gram fresh slaughter. And if you look at that seven gram slaughter, if you sit down as a farmer and calculate how many feed you believe you can seven gram, is a lot of money. But people, that one called hidden loss. That why some farmers, they will get six kg, two kg at six weeks. But how many feed do you use? That's why the problem, that's feed conversion ratio. That's why the problem is now. So because of the good management, good preparation, you can even get extra weight gain in Brella without feed. That's, that's the secret. Without even using feed. That's the secret. That one gram body weight at seven days is equal to plus seven gram body weight at slaughter. And one gram feed intake in one day. There is a standard 
feeding regime for Brela. If at that first one week, if you motivate the bank even more, you have one grand extra body as a seven day. You try to, at that first one week, make sure that the bank can fit as early as possible as they arrive your family. If you come to that, that's, that's a formula. Then look at what I said before now. Seven day body weight, breed standard. What the breed standard in the book? For all the above car, from, from 500, you know, for the, is 183 gram. That's the breed standard. But the aim of a farmer is that times 4.5 chip weight, I've said this before. Let's say you weigh 40 gram times 4.5, it gives you 180 gram at seven weeks. If you now work hard and get 181, it's like seven gram free as slaughter. Potentials, what do I see on the field? Some people are getting more than 210 grams. Those people are making money. They are in money. They, they are in money. I, I went to go to training and I asked farmer, what, what weight are you getting at after the seven? Most farmer 160, 150, 140. But there are some farmer in that hole. Because when I mentioned 200, they say it's not possible. There are some, there are some farmer that they are getting 220, 230 masses in Ikorodu. But they, do, they sleep in the pen. They sleep there. You get that to something, it's not easy, but you are making money. Then feel, like I said, feel for 125, 200. Like just like you have 129, it falls within this one. But this one, we don't want it. These are such work that we all over Nigeria we are doing. But potential work above 210. If you work and get above 210, well, light like, around you, you, you get a 2 kg at the minimal cost, at the minimal cost, less FCR. That's what we're after. And like I said before, every 10 gram is like 70 gram. That is the, the seven was final kill weight. I've told you before in that first child, one gram, if you ever get one gram above the standard, it's like seven kg, seven gram as well. If you're getting 10 grams, like 70. So these are things that are free, I get it. But you have to work that first seven days. You don't go home. If you go home, you will not get it. That's the truth. And we come to that. If you are if you are not sleeping on the pen in that pen, you will never get it. And I will think of that. That's why in Nigeria today, I, I don't want to mention name. There are some people who are making money in Brela. But people don't know why is that. When they are doing broody, even though you are manager, you are this, you have to sleep there. I don't want to mention, I have a farm, a big, one of these big brother operator. The, the doctors there, in fact, they even give their card to their friends so that they will draw money for their wife in Nigeria. Even their card, ATM card, they, they cannot even go home. They have to give, their, I know one of my friends, he gave his card to one doctor so that he will draw money and give his wife for them to feed. Because brother business, you cannot leave. I can tell you that, even though it will not work. It will not work. It will not work. So you have to, if you get the and you have to stay with the band. Okay, let's look at this diagram. Like I said, my friend, once you understand this diagram, honestly, you, you, are, you, are, you are making money. Look at this zero day. Seven days, 14 days. I want all of us to pay attention. This one is effective of the breed in the above from seven, seven days. It's a research work that I've done. It's not, you cannot see, it's not a textbook, something that I want to copy. No, it's data. Because uh, every day I, I, I have, I'm just going consulting for pharmaceutical, I have the data, they will give me my data. So I collect all these data, south to west, south, south, west. If not, I have this data and I've collected uh, before I now. I now find that this, this is what a brother farmer is supposed to do. Open houses. So, one, void weight, the minimum after one week is 185. Most farmers are doing the business. After one, you're supposed to get 185. And this is the average weight gain of a brella. Every day, for the first one week, brella grow by 20.4% every day. Now they add 20.4 grams every day, they be adding. After two weeks, they were doing 41.7 grams every day. 
Every three weeks, they'll be adding 64.5 every day. This is the weight gain average. Boy, look at the fuel consumption in gram. That's for one bag. You discover that the feed you are giving your bag, the weight of the fish will be less than the weight of the brailler. That means that like you are getting 129 gram now. You may find out that the feed you use is more than 129 gram per one bag. This is for one bag now. If GM, maybe GM can calculate now, but then you find out that the feed you use to get 129 gram, it may be above 160 or 170 gram. That is a loss. So at any point in time, the weight of the day, the body weight of day old of weighing every week, either we are weighing your bag every week, the weight you get shall be higher than the feed consumed per week. This per week, every 165 gram. So you can see that one at, oh, for one bag, they consume 165 gram per week, body weight 185. It's always less. But some farmer, you find out that the feed they will consume is even more than the weight of the bag. That one, most of them don't do that one. That was called feed conversion rate. That one we're talking about feed conversion rate. You have to track it. And a standard umbrella for one week, your feed conversion rate shall be 0 0.9. If you calculate it above one, it's already lost. You have lost of that. You can never gain it. It's not possible. That way, umbrella is it is rewarding and high risk business. So you keep on tracking your record that, not just feed and weigh, as well, you also weigh the feed they consume. So the standard is minimum, or this one is minimum or minimum, is 0 0.9. If you get 0 0.99, it's a loss to the farmer, honestly. So by that, you divide 167, divide by 185, you get 0 0.9. So you can calculate on your family, but at the same now, you can sit down and calculate how many one bus consume feed divided by one to nine? You can see that maybe it will be above one point one. It's only a loss. The second week, one brother supposed to consume 375 kg of feed in the week. And go to bed is 465. By the second week, you are going to minimum, minimum more. This is minimum more. 465. Not less than 465. Once you get less than 465 by the second week, that farm is danger. So people are getting 500. 520, but the minimum, if you come to worst massive, is 450 after the second week. Now we are talking about we are only 301. You find out that now your feed conversion rate is even higher because the value was consumed more than three, even 380, 400, and I get it 301 ground. So you have to keep on tracking. And uh, the third week is 650, they consume at 945. So you discover that if you now go down, look at once seven in, in one week, one bag will consume once seven gram of feed, and they grow by twenty point four. The second week, so then cumulative. You look at this place here. Cumulative once seven, they give you one eighty five body weight. Then after second week, cumulative two weeks, they will eat five forty two cumulative, and they give a weight of four sixty five, which is still less. By 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 three weeks. They eat 1.1, they give you 9, 9.4. You can see you, what I'm saying that as the brother, as the birds are growing, as they are growing, as they are growing, growing, the conversion of fish to flesh is reducing. That's what I'm saying. I'll still come to that, you see. And that's why I put here that if you look at after six weeks, you can see that the bird will eat 4.7 kg of fish cumulatively. And the body can only grow by 93%. But by, by seven weeks, it will eat for three kg of feed, and the, the body, the way the growing will, will, will drop down. If you look at that, they are growing 20, 41, 64, 81, 91, by 6 weeks, 3. After six weeks, the body are no more growing again. They, they, they don't, they, the way they are growing is they eat, more, they eat more than the way they grow. After six weeks, 90, 83. It's for that's why now if you didn't get that weight in before here, it's a loss. So that why in umbrella business, that 33 days out of the 1,000 hours, that 333 days is this one one and two weeks. This is this one, this is green. This is why you make your money in umbrella. Once you pass these two weeks, you didn't make it, forget about it. You can never make it. Take it or leave it. It's not possible. You can never make umbrella. And that is the secret 
in Burela business. Shirt weak and second week. That is the green that can give you money in Burela. After second week, if you make it, they forget about you. It's a loss. So that was Burela business, you keep making sure that that first week, second week, you work hard. You work hard to achieve the weight. Once they are able to achieve, achieve that weight, it will successfully continue at getting the weight. I hope you understand that one. And look at if you I will still now explain this one here. Look at the brailler, how they are growing. For the first one week, hello, I want you to understand this one. For the first one week, they feel the brailler is eating. They use 80% for growth, 20% for maintenance. I want to understand that one. After second week, they use 70% of the feed they eat to grow and 30% for maintenance. That means that they move about the sheet. That's the main thing. Yeah, that's what for maintenance. By three weeks, you can see that they will use 60% of the feet to grow and 40% for maintenance. After six weeks, you can see here, yeah, the feet you are giving the burella, they only use 20% for growth and 75% for maintenance. So that means after seven weeks, the burella, they will eat more, but they use more of a feet to move about. They will not grow. So that way, in the business, a lot of people, they don't want even see massive. They are working on 35 days to solve 35 open house. Everybody is trying to solve the problem at 35 days, not even 40 days. Because by the time you go to that CC, they are, you know that you are going to lose because they are using 30% of the food you are giving to growth, only 70% for maintenance. So that way, once you have this idea at the back of your mind, you need to work hard as a farmer that these first two weeks, which is 80 for growth, 70 for growth, maximize it as a farmer. Maximize very well as a farmer. If not, you'll be, you won't be there, you'll not be growing, you're not making more money. And that's why FCR had to come in. A lot of farmers, they don't calculate FCR. A lot of farmers, they don't work on FCR. They only use the body weight. How many feet did you use to get that weight? It's very important. And that's very, very easy. Total point of feet consumed per bat in kilo, all over the mid body weight in a kilo. It's very easy. You, 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 all the food you are giving them, you have to weigh them. Either by the bag or have, and then at the end of the day, you multiply by the number of the bags that consume that feed. You have the average weight. You divide it. If, and I'll give you the data, one week zero point, for the one week 0 0.9, second week 1.1, three, three week 1.2, four, four, four point five, by six, 1.7, but say 1.9. So that's why once 1.8 free conversion, you are a loss. So that's why you maintain either 1.6 or 1.7. So that is how to, that's how the free conversion is. It not give you an idea how you are making money in the business. And this, let's, let's look at this feed conversion ratio. It's a measure of how well a flow convert feed into life weight. And it provides an indicator of management performance. It's also an indication of management performance. That FCR. You know, I told you before that the target of a brother farmer is that minimum mortality, like I, and the lab one gain, and then FCR. So I'm not picking the FCR out of the three targets of a farmer. Is it? And I, I now define it here is that the feed conversion ratio is a measure of how well a flow convert feed into life food. And also, it's a, it provides an indicator of a management, your management performance. Apart from the last weight, it will tell you how you are performing on the farm. And it's also a profit at any given feed cost. That is the FCR. So any small, change, any small changes in FCR at any given feed price can have a substantial impact on financial gain for the farmer. Very important. And that was something. Why should you monitor feed intake? Why should we monitor feed intake? Not only the weight. Farmers don't measure the feed intake. What they have is the weight of the bag. They don't make most brilliant farmers, only few. And that was it. Why should you mental feed intake? One, to keep track of your business. Number one, and to reduce feed wastages. There are some players that the brother, brother are, not, are not growing, but they are feeding the feed. You discover that most of the feed is on the floor. Maybe 30 or 40% is on the floor. And I tell you that in every one gram they consume, is like one gram body weight. So any, if, the, if the feed is on the floor now, it's not like layers that you can wait again. If, if you can calculate the amount of feed that's on the floor that the person wants to consume, 
That is the weight you are losing also. So that through this feed wastages. Following feed intake closely will reveal either overfeeding or underfeeding also. And it also allows you whether your body is converting or not. If your body is not converting to the feed to grain, if your if your brain is not converting the feed to flesh, then you have to you have to analyze the feed. You have to look at the feed and management. It also reveals your management practice. These are the FCR. Let me give you, let me show you a, a case study here. A farm in Atta. You can see that a number of live chicks on arrival, we collect 13,000 in two pen. Number of birds on arrival, six. Average weight on arrival, 45. You can see that 45 gram here, which is a bonus for us. But then I say 45 times 4.5 is almost 190. So we work hard. These are the places that are getting 210. 220. That means the farmer is making a lot of money here. But you also see that the same farm from the same high the following week, the following just one week interval. Number of chicken, we collect 6,610. Number of mortality on Araba is four. But average body weight is 38. Instead of 45, from the same high we are getting 38. So this is why management has played it. Well, this place is in danger. This family is already in danger because the birds are already either compared to about 70 gram or one, two gram backwards. So you have to think out of the box and see how you can convert this bad bird to good bird. Any farmer, any farmer that said that, I don't believe that again. I will say it myself ignorantly, but now with, with hard work, with dedication, with with perseverance, you can convert bad birds to good birds. That's what I discovered. So no sure this is what they give me from hatchery. They are bad. Though. No, you can even, even though they give you bad chicks, you can still work hard and convert it to good chicks. I can tell you attentively. The moment we collect this catch eight, we give special attention to this bird. At the end of the day, this catch eight kg gram plate, they even perform more than the forty-five percent gram. So it's everything that depends on human factor sometimes. Human factor, human factor, human factor. Because we give our attention to this bird and they do better than even the 45 gram. So what I'm saying, there is no good bird, there is no bad bird, it depends on the stuff. And that's why like, the, way, the way I'm talking about is that from zero to 21 days, you do book away and find the average. But from 21 days, 28 days, use individual birds. Don't, after 28 days, don't use book weighing again. Use individual weighing. And like I said before, samples should be collected at three locations around the house and all birds in the same sample way. A minimum of 1% or 100 birds, whichever is greater per pen or house, should weigh. Any less than that, you didn't do anything. Forget about it. That's for Brela. And you can still put the location. So this FCR, now, how do you solve the problem with the FCR? Because that's the cocoa, minimum mortality is how you do your management. Uh, the free commercial ratio is how do you do it? Now? Because that's the cocoa, that's the secret of the business. Like in layers, how you can get the body, the body can lay very well. Here, is your, what you have to is FCR. That's your bottom, that's your compass that can direct you in the brilliant business. Solving or preventing FCR problem in a flow where both good planning and good management. Very key. Anything that affects life body weight, feed intake, or feed weight will be will influence FCR. So always as a worker, the owner, everybody, you have to observe, you have to investigate, you have to identify, and you have to act. Just like now, now you have weight less than 29. You have to observe, investigate it, identify, and act very fast before you go to the second week. And in everything is about management, it's key. Management is key. You know, we talk about environment, the temperature, humidity, you look at it. What is the hygiene level, the clean out, the biosecurity on that part, we have look at it. The nutrition about the feeder, you don't like every, uh, GM said that. If you are using mash, you may not likely go get good results. So, crumbly. Even to start, you don't even use, use collectives. It's crumbly, you use 
from, from day one of the startup. You don't even prioritize for, for the first one week is crumble. Then you have to do disease control, good vaccination, even against oxidosis. It will help you a lot. Well, you can all, these are also things that uh, as on the broiler farm that you should be looking at performance latest issue in broiler production. One, like now that you have average, average below standard weight, what are you to look for? You look at the feed, number one. Anytime you have below average, average weight, the first thing that comes to your mind, you look at the feed, number one. You look at the feed as a drinker. Number two, you look at the ventilation temperature and lightning and hail. These are four, five things that affect low body weight in brain. That is the performance related issue now. So anytime you don't achieve the body weight of the brain, first go, put your investigative feed, drinkers and feeders. Because if you are using no drinker and you are using no feeders, the bars will not grow. If the drinker and feeder are inadequate, the brother will not grow. If ventilation temperature, they are not correct, brother will never grow. And lightning, how is the lightning on the farm? If it's not proper lightning, the brother will not grow. And then the hair, if they are diseased, they will not grow. So if, if you have high mortality, mortality in one week, your mortality is so high, that means, like I saw, I saw in the report, MD posted 5% mortality, Maybe to me, it's very high. So if you have high mortality, umbrella, check for ventilation and temperature. These are the key umbrella. Check for your ventilation and check for your temperature and the hair. Two things you check. If there's high mortality, community mortality. Also put, especially ventilation and temperature. 80% of umbrella farmers, they don't put them on ventilation temperature. That was killing the body. Not for plates of umbrella. Then, if I cannot be, I will give this slide, I will not be able to go to. If you have increased FCR, like we have, it, it's almost the same thing, increased FCR will let you low body weight. You look at the feet, then here now, you look at, it's not the feet that drink us now, because there's increased, increased, because there's increased FCR. Then, because if there's increased FCR, that means the bats are eating high and they didn't put on weight. So each of the feet that drink us don't, don't arise there. So here you look at feed, quality of the feed, ventilation temperature, lightning and health, and so forth, and so forth. If there's increased water take the normal, you look at the feed, because feed, feeders are drinkers, ventilation and health. These are the performance related issues that when we give you, you study it. So that anytime you have issue, you now go and check all those areas to see how you can correct it. How to solve or prevent FCI problem in Brela because I'm a, if I say no FCI now, delivery time is very key. Then the breathing essential, which is the feet, the air, which is the ventilation now, the water, the light, and temperature, and then the disease challenge and the vaccination. And the only thing that, what is even perfectly me that 95% of these factors are within farmers' control. So why are we having that problem? All what I mentioned, the delivery time, the feeding, the air, the water, the light, the temperature, even vaccination, they are within the farmer's control. So why are we having issues in Brela? Why are we having issues in farming? Why are we having a low production, low body weight? You see, within our control. So we need to ask ourselves. And like I said before, preparation, like I put in, in my pro, uh, I want us to tell it our man here, good preparation. Because high week one performance, because high slaughter. So that preparation is very key. Very, very key. Check preparation arrival checklist. As a marina supposed to have a, 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 a program, pre arrival checklist. You have, you have that document with you. You have that document. So that you'll be ticking it. Like it has a, it has a way you'll be ticking it. That preparation is key to develop farming success. One, clean out the house and equipment. You check each, each. Oh, it, you, the marina will sit down. It's not something that you just bring umbrella and uh, you start putting, it's not like that. What do you sit down and say, let, you, now, you now assess your checklist. Clean chicken house and equipment. It's okay. 
that make sure sound the equipment are clear and inspected. Yes, you take it. To plan litter, do you have litter? Check litter because litter is very important. I don't know. Most of the wushevi you cannot get. Like I used to them training, you cannot get wushe dry wushevi now. They will put the wood every day, and then they 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 will make the shevi. You will never collect it. You will know it. The shevi is wet. You be changing. You be changing, but you think of those things. You must have your litter in time. You must have a store for litter. Why you dry? Keep it so that you keep on changing it dry. And the most of the most of the wushevi it has tiny. And some people are using it, most of it, some people are using it shape, it's sort of, which is not good. But if you know how to maintain it, it's okay, but sort of it's not good. So you check list. Set of breeders, your stores, your laptop, you, you take it, preheat the house. It depends on the weather of the day. But like now, in the northern summertime now, in fact, you even have to preheat the house. So it is even 24 hours, it's even small. It's even less. In the northern, you're supposed to preheat the house. 72 hours before the arrival of the day old chicks. If you preheat the house 12 hours before the arrival of the day old chicks, those brothers would never perform. And I will come to that, you see it. Because preheat the house, you have to heat the floor and the wish be. If you allow the brother to come without preheating, you, the brother will not grow. I will come to that. So preheat the house 24 hours. There are sometimes you hold the weather, you can even preheat it, even six hours, 12 hours. There's some time you have to preheat it 24 hours. There are sometimes 72 hours. Like when the weather is very cool. So it depends. The, the people on the farm will sit down and assess it. Ask a question. The, very important. You check this. What is the ventilation system for the house? Check the ventilation system for proper air exchange. Are you nailing your brother very, very nail completely? It's very wrong. Your brother, your topolin. She has to be flexible that it can raise up and raise down. And when you are raising it from up or not from down, do you do like that? You check this it. Check feeders and the drinkers. Are they enough? How many are they coming? You have to check it. Not that when the bus comes, that one brings from so No. You have to check me. And for how long are you going to use this one? Is it for one week? Is it for two weeks? How two weeks? How which one are you going to? They will change it. People don't do that one. Then Pre feed your feed. What feed are you going to use? I know your vitamin or drug has to be raised. Check this. Then check our replacement light. Even the light, you must have some light. If you are using bulb, you must have some bulb for replacement in case one die. This is what you call not that one, two or three bulb die tomorrow. You complain that two hours or that 12 hours, like I said before, every one hour represents 0 0.1 of electric light. So if bulb maybe. Uh, spoil and they go about it, it has already affected the product performance. So, all these things you must have called pre arrival checklist. You must have your form, you design your form. We design your form. These are the ones we design for farmers. We look at your farm and then we design maybe differently. Some maybe even few, some maybe even more than this. Depend the operation of your farm. But these are common ones pre arrival checklist. You must have it. Even though you are collecting product like every week, that form must be filled and, and fill it, tick it. And there's a file for it and put it in a file. There's a what you call pre check file for Brella. You put it there. Why do you do that? Why do you do all this one? To review all the management aspects so that it will come and tell you what's happening. So, in the checklist form, you can go back to the checklist form, what has gone wrong. So, it's very, very important that we help maintain Brella performance, even for the hatchery in the Brella house, to define practical measures that will indicate successful breeding and well developed. Brella. That's why you have to do check checklist. And some of the checklists, like I've trained you in a, my, on the bullet, you can still do it, Brella. Like check quality measurement, you should do it the same thing. Like check check, uh, check check, you put it like you put at the back. If it takes more than four hours, four seconds for the brother, or it's a weak brella, you look at the beak, you look at the hoof. You that was called check check check. Is there any bruises? Are they weak? Are they dehydrated? I have told you that that will place, you can apply it also in Brella. These are things that you have to do, not only to wear the bus and, and, and post. No, all I want to have trained you on that day old thing, apply it in, in, a, in also Brella. Because if you don't do it, that was, if you don't do it, there are some times that they may bring Brella, especially if you are bringing Brella from, from Ibadan, like to Kaduna, and it's a long distance. And, 
Maybe they follow through, uh, maybe Togi, Lokoja, and there's hold up. And during the heat period, you just put umbrella and be given antibiotic feet. They may even die. You have to ask, you have to assess the bus. Have the driver stayed low on the road? Was there too much heat in the car? That was how you check check. It's a loss in umbrella. And you have to document it. You have to look, you have to document it. So that will help you. If you not discover that the brain is too weak, you don't even use antibiotic for them at all. You have to readdress them first with the glucose or caprolite. And we have we have caprolite that we are telling mainly for brella to readdress them. Then seven day mortality, after all these checklists mortality, seven day mortality and seven day weight. Very important, please. Then we now come to brella check brooding. You know, brooding is a traditional period and important to keep the chicks in the normal neutral zone. Chicks are very sensitive to temperature extreme because they have poor insulation as they only have down feathers. So they lose heat very quickly. And that's why we, there is a cocoa now. When you're doing brooding, you need to be the mother here. Are we listening, sir? Are we listening? Hello? Are we flowing? Hello, sir. Yes, doctor, we are with you. We are listening. Thank you. When you are doing brooding, well, well, well. okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. When you are doing brooding, you need to be the mother hen. If you don't have the mother hen ability, forget, forget it. You need to be the mother hen. And how is the mother hen doing? That why sometimes I used to tell people in training, both in layers and umbrella, even turkey, this brooding aspect. 99% of farmers, they don't follow it. Even though you tell them, they don't even follow it. And let me tell you, it is only the expert threats that are key to it. We have to learn a lesson. For you to do brooding, you have to borrow from the local chicken. If you don't borrow from local chicken, you have problem with your bird. So the staff now, Marina staff have to understand from today, if you are receiving their old chicks, you have to learn the lesson of the local chicken. I think all of us have stayed in the village. We have seen, apply the way the local chickens are doing because you are the mother. And in the local chicken, there's a lovely lesson to learn from it. A lovely lesson to be successful in brooding. But because of our time, that is like, I, I, I used to describe it in brooding brainer. But because we are doing an extensive training, I just brought out of the 11, I brought three. Let me remain, remain eight. And if I, I left the, I, let's forget about eight. If you can apply these three religiously as a human being, I can tell you, Marina will get 230, 240 grams after one week and you make money. If you're able to apply what, if you're able to apply three out of the 11 lessons we drive on the local chicken. Because when you are doing brooding, you are replacing the mother chicken. And if you don't have this one, things will not work. I can tell you that. It will not work. And number one is that she first lay enough eggs before sitting on them. Before you say local chicken sit on the egg, she will do preparation, get a place, Go and bring, uh, look if I will remember when I was young, all this grass, so I can put his, uh, his lay again on it. The same thing like that pre, pre checklist, you do that one. Then after that, means that one called good planning. If you do apply that before brooding, like I said before, you will not succeed in brilliant business. Number two, which is the most important one that. After she has finished laying her egg, she will sit on the egg. I can tell you, just draw your mind back to the village. You see the local chicken, they will stay there on the egg, they will not go, they will not even eat. How many staff can do that? How many? So what I'm saying that, that brood here is we need it only for seven days. The chick does seven two weeks. The local worker can never leave it, can never leave the egg because it's brooding. Now you are doing brooding. Can, do you leave it? Do you leave the brooding pen? And I can tell you, my dear farmers, the Lebanese in Nigeria, when they are doing brooding, 
you dare not go home. I can tell you, one of the biggest uh, broiler producer in Ibadan, even the GM that worked there is a senior vet. But what are you doing? He can't go home. He stay in the pen. Is he bad? That 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 that, that veteran, 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 veteran doctor is my senior colleague because that guy was a veteran. He was working in Mich Mich Michelin farm then. When I was seeing when I was seeing in in, in university, and you see the opt now. In fact, that one want to go for convention last October in Benin. He was supposed to go there. He supposed to even follow me, but he said that they are going to do it. So and it's a lot of what they do. They have to stay there. So when she starts sitting on the, her head, she minimizes movement. That is discipline. If you are not disciplined, you're brooding, you cannot get involved. You cannot, you never, 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 never get involved. And this is practicable. I've said in training, I have a very doctor, a lady, she has a brella, she produces 60,000 60, every week. She, she, our market, I tell people, our market is Jigawa market. She, she runs a chicken in Ota, but her market is in Jigawa. Her forum is in, in, in Abuja. She wanted to call me the doctor. Why get it? I don't understand who. where I have my, my store. She has one store in, in Lagos. Valentine is selling cheaper than her. What's the problem? And I ask her, how, at what way do you sell out there? And that's six to seven weeks. Valentine is not at the farm days. So how can you? There's no way. There's no way you you can you can you, you can compete with her. Do when they do do you say they say for well, nobody say they say there's no way you can get to the result. So it's better you implement. And now you're brooding, she don't even sleep. Her own, she don't even sleep. When I told her this is the secret, even her own now, anytime they do brooding, even the owner of the don't even sleep because she knows what they're going to get. And if she sleeps, she knows what they're going to do. Though she don't be on the farm, but she stay in her house. Though, in order she put camera, she bought the manager to WhatsApp, WhatsApp handset. And every one, one hour from 12 a.m., she will be called one of the audit with the video. And I think she makes like that. So they'll be sleeping there. We we'll come someone come to temperature regulation. Like I put temperature ventilation, very important for the So what I'm saying that we have to be disciplined if you want to be. Then the third thing that was learned from chicken is that she physically lose weight. What is still on her head due to decrease in feeding. When she's sitting on that egg, she's brooding, she physically lose weight. What is still on her egg due to decrease. She doesn't mean that way when they sacrifice and sell it denial. For you to succeed in, 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 in Brella, they be sacrificed and they shall be sell it denial. If not, things will not work. I can tell you that. Because that chicken, she sit, when she's sitting on the broody, she can't go and eat. Let's draw our mind back to the village. At least, let's draw our mind back to the village. You can see a local chicken. If you come over, you're making noise. She will not even go and eat. Even the food close her. Even if they put food, go and put food close her. She will not work and go and eat because she's brooding her chicks. Until after that, they will now move about. So, are you doing like that? So now, can you now? Do you, can you be a mother here now? Can you be a mother here? This is what is lacking. And that's why money is missing. So we have to have good planning. We have to have a good discipline. And we have to sacrifice and sell it denial. Even not, you get poor results. Take it or leave it. And all the fact that we are succeeding in it is based on this one. It's based on this good planning, discipline, and sacrifice and sell it denial. And even at my, that was because of the internet, because they were even on our farm. Anytime I collected all chicks, and I found out that the birds are, are, are below standard. After I sent the birds, I sleep in the pan with the tender. I will not go home. For three days, I will not even go out in the pen. Because if I do like that, the farm will suffer. And I don't want to give story to my MD. And this and this, I don't have, to, I don't give story. What after I give result? I give result. Thank you. So brooding and chick start. Let's get it right. Good brooding is crucial to good performance. Like I told before in, in my earlier presentation that don't say that 
Uh, my this thing we get is bad. This one we get it. No, it is you are the mother hen. If they bring good batching for you, be a good mother hen, it will turn good. I'll show you example of that two for five gram, that eight gram, and at the end of the day, that that eight gram will be better than for five. For that we are relaxed. Oh, that for five we are also we are relaxed. But this one there is a monkey, there is fire on the monkey. We work hard. And even if I pass the photograph without using feet, we use management. That is good building management is critical to good performance. Plan before the chicks arrive and follow the plan. I keep on saying that to her. Building management affects the infirmity also. So don't leave anything to lock. Most people, farmers, they leave the farmer family to lock. Oh, these chicks are probably they are not good. Ah, they start blaming the hatchery. They lie. So don't leave anything to lock. Work for it. Look at another thing, another analysis. Look at another analysis. This brooding, you understand? This is a research work. And I have my own research work now. Up to last year, I do it. But this one, I got it for a test before. But my data is almost the same thing. So that you understand what we are talking about in Brela. You can also apply in Pulet. Look at it. In 1975, brooding, they took over it. It's only add 80% to the, to the flock life. Because people don't know much about breeding before. They just don't bring the old chicks, put feed and go. So I don't know, it's only 80% to the flock life. But by 1985, so people work out, it's not 20%. 1985, 24%. 2005, 29%. 2013, 30%. So people are going to 40% now. So, and that means the breeding, the more you work on it, the more you increase the flock size without using feed, that's a secret. That means you are they are growing very well with less feed because we discovered that the intentional mass of brella, the intentional mass of brella, grow by three hundred times in one week. So that's why it's after one week you know whether you're you are, whether you're making money in the brella or after one week you know because of and look at look at data. So, but some farmer up to now, the, we are this 2013. Oh, today, this the, the data I have is 2013, and now we are 2020. So, data has come up, but they have not released it because some farmer they are releasing it. You see, some farm in Nigeria, they are still practicing 1975 method of breeding. They didn't understand it. Most Nigeria, they are still using 1975 analog way of breeding because they don't put their mind. That's why the, the Israeli, the, the Lebanese here, they are, their mindset is on 30 or 40 percent of brooding. So, because that's why they, they know that the, the brother can grow very fast and they maximize the money. And that's why genetic gain in growth rate means brother will reach killing age sooner. So, brooding period is still increasing for proportion of the total life of the, of the flock. Brooding period is steadily increasing proportion. Of the total life of the flock. So you, you work hard in the broody with less feet, they grow very fast and make your money. Just like I give you an example of that at 8 gram. Because we work very hard. So the brother even grows very fast than the 45 with the same, even less feet. That's a secret in brother. So please look after your chicks and it will look after you. Let us look after our chicks. And now the chicks will look after us. So we have to do proper building, proper planning. We have to sacrifice ourselves, sacrifice this play, self-denial. In terms of the brother, that first two weeks is a self-denial for all of you. Even not, we see where we are. And the goal of the brooding is that it stimulates early feeding and water intake. It's as little growth the first week of life. The skeletal system, the cardiovascular system, the good, good development, and flock size is also achieving during the brooding period. Without effective brooding, performance will be compromised, as simple as that. Without effective brooding, performance will be compromised. This is the bad, most efficient period. Oh, I love, oh. This is the bad, most efficient period. That's why everybody knows about it. In short term, period regulation the primary 25 days. The key is to achieve all the above with the minimal stress. 
more effort during breeding, better result in the final product performance. I like that sentence. sentence. More effort during breeding. Not effort, though. During breeding. More effort. Oh, I hope you understand this. I hope you understand my language this afternoon. More effort. And you can see I put it in black so people understand. During breeding, it better result in final performance. You may have effort during breeding, and you have reward in final reward. But here, if you, say, if you now put more effort in the breeding, you have better reward. But most of them, they have only effort and reward. So please, let's add more effort so that we can have better results. So this temperature we are talking about now is that, like, if you look at here, I'm going to, if you look at here, look at temperature of ventilation. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, out of 16, let's say each umbrella, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 is better temperature. Out of 16 related issues in Burela, 13 out of that problem is ventilation and temperature. So that's why I'm coming to temperature and ventilation. I'll, I'll, I'll take my time on that. Very important in Burela. That's the brooding period. So temperature management. Sorry, let me take a little water. One, day one, most critical. In fact, day one, no rotation if you sleep. It's a night vigil. That's what I tell you. That day one below arrival is a night vigil arrival. It's a night vigil. First one week is critical. Second week, less critical. Later, things have changed now. That was a pretty. Not just go and put it and go away. You have to make a temperature of the liter. Go and buy the thermometer is even 30 naira, 100 naira. In fact, we are even distributing free thermometer to farmer masses. I have plenty that will give you power free. Measure the liter of the temperature. That was a pretty. The liter must be 30 to 33. That is sorry. Farming now is scientific. It's no more analog again. It's scientific. Just to get 50, just to get this, this point, 18, 20, 40. So people are on 40. So that brooding period is steadily increasing proportion of the total life of the chicks. That's what we're after. Please. So that's why. Little more than 30 to 33. Even the concrete flow, you must measure it. Someone is 28 or 30. If you don't the temperature of a little and flow, you will lose the money. So I take it or leave it. And you see it as a way. These are things that farmers don't know it. But people that know it, they don't even tell you. But we are telling you for free. They do it. They have to keep it measure all these things because you see it. Why is it important? High breathing temperature, the body of the bus is like what about 70 percent water. So continuous high temperature causes loss of water for the body. And if loss, if water loss reach 10 percent, the chicks die to duration. What I'm saying that that's why breathing you have to be there. It's a discipline. It's a sacrifice. It's a self denial. Because if you are not there, you just put either salt or charcoal. Or gas, and you go away. You don't know how the temperature is the pain. It may go up, it may go down. But if you are there, you'll be checking every one hour, you know what's happening. So if the temperature is too high, even in the afternoon, this is what is happening. Something like if, they will not even grow, they will not even eat. And sometimes you see pesty in Burela. So this is another problem of high breathing temperature. You said the, the sheet will block the anus because of high breathing temperature. Or if there's no water, if the person drink too much of water, you see all these things. Also, that do you know that umbrella, umbrella, especially umbrella, chicks breathe through his nostrils. They breathe through the nose, they don't chick, not through the mouth. They chicks breathe through the nostrils when losing two grams per 24 hours. That's what happened. But chicks gasping through big can lose 10 grams of water in 24 hours. So if you go to a pen, and the birds are opening mouth. They lose ten percent gram of moisture, and they, they will not grow. But you don't know, and they will eat your food. So I want to understand that technology. They big normally the birds, your birds, they breathe through the nostrils, and they lose only two grams for twenty four hours. 
But if the temple is high, they will not, they will not open their mouth. They bring through their mouth to lift heat and they look to 10 grams of moisture of water for the system. So that's why Brudy, you have to be there. You have to be there. Be checking the temperature. There is still a temperature. So that's why in most of the farm we are consulting for, there's what we call temperature notebook. If you don't have it, you're not doing Brudy. You are just playing. You must have what we call temperature notebook in Brela. That somebody must, must write it every one, one hour. But that was critical. That is not one week. Everyone was supposed to put, put it. Even the first day, everyone was directed the temperature. So that, you know, after one hour, you can now know how to adjust it. So people go for break, maybe temperature is too high. And you don't know. I've seen a case like that, documented in Ojebo day. That was in second week of December. After two training for them, they might collect almost 1,000 brillas. And I said, I want to see the day old chicks. Before we go, they, they, they stop outside talking. After they training them like this, even physically, before we, we, we are one with the owner, as we don't pay, all the birds are panting. They just go and they pull out the police. Why is the logbook? They, that logbook, they are put on owner. That means they're not, that means they just come and fill it for filling purpose. They're not following the right thing. As we enter, all the birds are panting. They don't like gasping through the beak. That means they're losing the percent grow and that means they, they, will eat, they put the weight and they're losing the weight. And the farmer is losing. These are issues. So low temperature is that chilly, that's blue pneumonia. If temperature is below the normal, it leads to pneumonia in chicks, which is the lowest blue. So chill chicks stress immune system, making chicks vulnerable to infection. So whether it is too high or too low, it's not, it affects both the pullet umbrella. So you want to have, you have to maintain the standard, and that's why. Local chicken, they don't live to go and eat. Because by the time they live, go and eat, the temperature fluctuate and they would affect the bird. That way she maintains steady. That's why we say stay there, steady. Please let us let us get this into our, our, our mindset. Please. Suffocation also under low temperature, chicks hold it together to maintain body temperature and this is to trapping or suffocating to death. So let us look at. In Brunei, in a business that we are talking, let's talk business. Feed utilization at low temperature. Let us look at feed utilization at low temperature in Brunei. The metabolism of feed lead to heat produced by the chicks. You know when the, when the chicks are eating feed, even human beings, the metabolism of the feed it lead to heat produced by the birds. So at temperature drop below comfort zone, the chicks consume more feed to maintain the body temperature. And stay comfortably. So what's happening is that if the temperature in the pen is too low, the bird will keep on eating the feed to maintain its cool body, but not to grow. Even for it to grow, 80% of the feed for growth and 20% for maintenance, they'll be naive because when the cool weather is too cold, that 80% they're supposed to eat it, will not achieve it again. That's what I'm saying here. Because at one at, at one week, the bird is supposed to use. 80% of the feed to grow and 20% maintenance. I say we send it for them for growth, 30% for maintenance. But if the temperature is very low during breeding, it reverses the case also. That means they use 20% for growth and 80% for maintenance. I want you to get that one. If the temperature is low, it will, it will change that formulation. That's why I say, as temperature drops below comfort temperature, the chicks must consume more feed. Even the ones for here, said that if the temperature is below comfort zone, it's even worse than. Normal because the bird will eat more feed again so that they can produce heat by to themselves. E.g., their old chicks at 28 degrees centigrade, you know, the standard day old chicks is 33 34. That's the standard breeding temperature. You maintain 33 to 34 for the old chicks. So now we have done a study and documented that the old chicks are 28. If instead for them to be at 33 and now they are 28 degrees centigrade. Require twenty percent more energy than chicks at three degrees centigrade. Now we want further again. At twenty, if you put the chicks at twenty six degrees centigrade, the energy will consume require fifty percent more energy. So at twenty four percent, the chicks require two hundred percent more energy. So below comfort zone, temperature will need higher FCR. So what I'm saying is that if you now go home, that like you go home, and you two two scenarios will happen. Two scenarios will happen. You now light light, you put charcoal or gas, 
and you go home. By 1 a.m. to 5, the temperature was dropping. That time, temperature dropping. Whether in hot weather or cold, it was still dropping. And at that period, your kerosene must have been burned because you have been putting around maybe eight. By that one, maybe seven hours or six hours, the kerosene must have lowered down. The more the kerosene coming down, the more light will not be burning well again. I think you're dropping down. If you are, if you are using, if you are using, uh, if you are using uh, uh, charcoal, charcoal must have burned down. And the people so the will be eating more of the food because they will not die. So so food is expensive. Coal is that one says make sure you use coal and make sure you stay there. And look at another scenario also at low temperature. There are two things there. Please, can you meet your somebody? Can somebody meet him? Say, look, he's distracting me. Let somebody meet him. Say, please. Uh, low temperature also is that oxygen is required in the production of heat and energy for feed to grow. You know, if, if at the base is eating the feed, they need energy, they need oxygen also for metabolism. So, a temperature drop below comfort temperature, they just consume more feed and oxygen stay comfortable. Like I said before, at 20 degrees, degrees centigrade, it requires 20 percent more energy, like I said before, and five percent more oxygen than the chicks at 30 degree or 34 degrees centigrade. At 26 degrees centigrade, the chicks require 50 percent more energy, and only five percent increase in demand for oxygen is required for cause assisted. So that way, so if you go some farm, birds are dying. If you open it, you see water in the intestine. It's because there was no oxygen. There was no oxygen because the birds were using the oxygen because when the water is too cold. They be consuming more feed. And as they consume more feed, they need more oxygen. And you have seen the place where you have seen the place there's no oxygen, no ventilation, the body will die. If you use antibiotic in the line. So these are temperature guides. Please, can somebody meet somebody has can somebody tell me somebody let somebody meet if you stopping me. Let them can you meet yourself, please. Thank you. Temperature guide. You are only brooding for that three and that's two weeks, ten days in Burela. So when you are doing brooding, is that this relative humidity, you must maintain it. So when you do brooding, you also look at the relative humidity and the temperature. And you know, statistically also, is that for fans that know it, that one you need to assess the day old chicks, whether it's from old parent stock or from, from uh, new year parent stock. Because chicks from old parent stock require, chicks from uh, old parent stock require less heat than chicks from old parent stock. So you need to look at it. This is, a, this is a temperature, like I said before. Try to keep the band in the comfort zone. And this, this is the green band, like here. They will be 20, let's 30, 33 or 35, and 75, 75 humidity. But once it is too hot, I've explained. If it's too cold, I've explained. So this is the green zone, this place, and it's determined by the combination of temperature and humidity, that's the ventilation. If you reach the red line here, bird will die. In the blue area, your bird will suffer cold stress and they eat more feed, which will, which will seriously impact on the feed conversion ratio. I've explained that one before. So litter, at least I've explained the litter. Avoid it doesn't wait or dump shaping into the brother house. Don't use so go, don't use so those as it could as it could predispose the bad to present problem for the chicks. Pay attention to area near drinkers and feeder. Areas in the pen. Pay attention to area near feeders and drinkers. Some drinkers, because you keep it in one place and the birds are drinking, what are you drop there? Because of the coccidiosis. So pay attention to those areas. Feeder and drinkers should be keep at a high so that dropping cannot contaminate them and keep a group different. Litter is important in regulation. Litter is important in regulation of flow temperature. The litter you are putting there, it has to pop off. That why you need to have, that why you have to preheat. Litter has two purpose in brooding. One, regulation of flow temperature. And second, subsequently, the chicks body temperature. So the litter you are, you are putting on your farm, it has two purposes. You have to know that one. So routine litter raking and replacement is essential. Remove one litter promptly and immediately. If there's any wet you see, only remove it. Don't worry. That way you have some wish in your in, in your store. Even near the drinkers. Avoid wet or check litter as such litter are conducive to outbreak of coccidiosis. So fresh litter, fresh shaving must be dried and friable. That's all you can hold with your hand and you remove it. But what are the benefits of good litter? It reduces odor, ammonia, low bacterial loads, and health risk 
high, high fuel efficiency during pretty and broody, and clean feather for this work. These are the advantage if you have good litter. So look at this place now, like I said before, that litter is important in the regulation of flow temperature and subsequent the chicken body weight. And I also saw here, I also say here, I want to go here, most critical one day. Litter, such as three. Look at here. Concrete flow, 28 to 30. Look at what's happening here now. Why you do that? Why you have to measure it is that. Look at if you bring your old chicks, you are, are raising on flow. I tell you that make the temperature of the 28 to 30. The litter 31. Temperature 33, 35. The bottom of temperature of the ocean is 40 grams, 40 degrees centigrade. They say comfortable. But if the flow is 24 and litter is 30, and if you maintain your temperature at 35, the bird will take the heat but lose it. That means you didn't do anything. You see, you're heating very well. You say temp temperature is 35, 33. You think the temperature is okay. But if your flow is wet, is low, and we shall be, the bird will take the heat and lose three feet. So it will not work. They are cold. So that's the point of preheating. Of I don't know why you're doing that preheating. So that you are doing that heating, so that the temperature will be 30, 20, 30, so that 20, 30, the flow is a liter 31. They will, not, they will not maintain the temperature of those people, and they will grow very fast. But your temperature is still heaty. You are, going, you are just looking at the thermometer. Oh, thermometer is okay. But if the flow is low, if the temperature is low and the mission be, the bus will lose the heat to its heat. And that's why sometimes, occasionally, as the owner of the farm, as the manager of the GM, as you go around the brooder, always take bad and put it at the back of your neck or at your cheek. If it is too cold, that means your flow is not bad. It's, it's bad. That the brother will not grow. That your chicks feet are, are an excellent indicator of flow temperature. By placing the feet against your neck or cheek, if you can really learn how warm or cold the chick is, if it is warm, uh, that means your flow temperature is good. Your litter is good. But if it's too cold, that means your flow and litter is no good. So you know you have to work on that. It's very important. Very simple technology. You're like a layer that cannot lay you. If you touch the comb, if it is too warm, that means it's laying bad. If you touch the comb, it's too cold, it's not laying. The same thing in chicks. If you put the leg at the, your cheek or the back of your neck and you feel like it's too cold, that means they are doing wrong brooding. Very important. So ventilation, you know, let me run. Ventilation becomes a problem when the brooding house is closed. So when you close, you can close it to a body and say, space for allowance. That means, like I used to tell people that, and if you look at here, I will still go back so that we understand it very well. I say, out of 16, 13, 13 is temperature of ventilation. You can see, ventilation and temperature go together. Ventilation and temperature, they go together. And it's very important. So that's why ventilation is very key, and a lot of farmers are not getting it. When you are putting your topolin, there will be allowance to adjust it. It's not that you nail it completely. You, you, you close it, but if you're not comfortable in the pen, you see the bars are panting, you release it down. You can cut it up. And most of the time, that when you are, look, when you are, when you are creating ventilation, it is from opening from down. If you're opening from down, that means you don't know the business because the in poultry farm, in poultry house, we have three stages, but let me talk of two stages. The down in the flow, the down flow, that way you have the oxygen. Up, you have the gas, like the ammonia and carbon dioxide. Maybe you are using stuff, you are using charcoal, even because the carbon dioxide is going up and it go up, ammonia it go up. Because that way you see the building of pages, you have opening so that the gas can go up. But if this place, if this place is closed completely, when the carbon dioxide and ammonia mix there, they become heavier and they come down at the flow and displace oxygen. People know it, the bird will also be missing, they will not grow. So when you're opening both for layer or, or for gorilla, when you're when you're opening for allowance, it is from up downwards, not from down upwards. That's the most problem with farmers. So but then it become a problem when the Buddha is closed completely without allowance. So result lack of oxygen, accumulate carbon dioxide, weaken the bird, and they don't even grow and sometimes dead. 
This is what I explained before. The ammonia and carbon dioxide, if there's no place for you to go out, they come down and displace oxygen. The person will not die. They will eat, but they will not grow. So we want everything that maximize everything. So lightning, well, you make sure that light is distributed throughout the pen. So that what well, even part could cause bad threatening or event of this scratch, society or bad weight variation. Shadow or pocket of light or that will result on even body weight. So you make sure that there's bright light in the pen. These are some farms you can see. This one is not bright. So the birds here, they will eat it. The one here, they will not eat. So make sure there's light bright inside the farm. There's also a lighting program, like your farm, like I can do what you call lighting program for your farm. Then water is an invisible player in the brooding. We'll now go to water. Water is an invisible player in brooding. And in Brella, the intake of water will directly affect the amount of feed the brunella consuming. If your flock is drinking too little water, the answer is that they are also eating too little feed and they will not grow. So we have to get that one correct. So make sure there's ample of clean water to your bag. And if you know that the water you're giving to brunella during brooding, you cannot drink it. That means not a good water. So very important. So we now go to feed. Feed, 70% of the cost in volume of poultry production in Brunella comes from feed. So we have to put our mind there. 70% and above, not less than 70%. It's 70 minimum above of the cost in volume in Brunella production comes from the feed. So we should put our mind on that feed. And there are four rights of feeding, like I used to say before in my, in my training, you have to write the right quantity, right quality, right time, and right place. If not, your brother will not grow. Right place is in the sense that the feed shall be in the tray. If you, if you go to a poultry farm, brother farm, and you see a drop of feed on the floor, you have missed it. And if you are buying finished feed, that what we discover also is that before opening the bag, Please check. Is it a correct feed? Is it maybe instead of brilla starter, they now bring maybe crumbly out? Check before opening. Check bank tag. Very important to best before date and date of manufacture. You have to check it. Write it down. There's a book for all these things. Is the bag dry? Can you feel any clumsy or lumpy in the feed? You have to touch it too. Because brilla is not a layer, you don't gamble with it. Does the bag look old or dusty? Because the people have old stuff. And they won't send to you, as I said. So all this, if you don't check it, it will entail in your brother performance. And after opening the bag, you now use your sensor. What give us five senses? You have the eye, you have the nose, you have the ear. You see. So does the field look fresh? Now look at it. No mold, no flower working dust. It's easy. So they will not come and give, give you feel. We see, we have seen a lot of that in a, in many other places. Does the field smell fresh? Because they're using oil, too much of oil there, it, can, it will smell, so you know it. No rancid or other strength smell. Does the feet taste fresh? You can even taste it. You suppose no? Okay, at any time crumble as a farmer, you know the taste of the crumble, your, your finisher. You keep, if there's any variation, you have to caution the owner, the, the supplier. If you could answer yes only, your chicken will probably also say, yes, please give me the feed. And uh, this is the growth curve for a broiler. Of, uh, but what I'm saying that when you're using, you can see rapid development for that one week. Like I said before, the, the intensity of the brother increased by 300 times in one week. So there's rapid development of God in what in less than 14 days, which is which 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 is giving you the profit you are making because the intensity is the field conversion machine and develop from zero to 14 weeks. The development of skeletal and bone mineralization the this time around. That's why. Not all antibiotics will be adapted to brilla at this point in time, from this 0 to 14 days. Don't give quinolio. If it's aeroflozosine, don't give. Cipro, don't give. If you give them, it affects the growth rate. Very important. I just stop that one so I can move because of our time. Uh, usually, this approximately 80% of the yolk is being observed by the developing embryo during incubation. You know, they have a yolk, so 80% is developed during incubation. The remaining 20% of the yolk is drawn into the abdominal cavity before hatching. The, the yolk does remain in the chicks, and it's about 10-20% of the, of the one-day body of the chicks. That means as the chicks come into your farm, they can even say for two or three, they don't die. You tell them from Ibadan to Kato, they don't die because they still have about 
20 percent of the yolk because the yolk is 100 percent so they use 80 percent growth incubation so after they hatch them they still have 20 percent of yolk inside them so if feed and water are not available if feed and water are not consumed by the child at optimal and as early as possible they will delay in yolk absorption causes some early mortality after three days that way it's confirmed that you discover after three days but they'll be very high they will say hey, it's, a, it's a lie it's because the bird do not have feed and water as early as possible so anytime you are raising burella or pullet and there's and there's marked mortality on the tree is because that you didn't give the bird feed and water to consume as early as possible because feed immediate access to good quality feed together with water is very essential when the birds arrive supplementary feeders like tea tray paper are needed to get started in Brella, you must use chick paper because of that. That means you must spray this paper. 90% of the Brella must cover with chick paper. We, we, we call that not a reason why. Even when you are ready, uh, they will order in cages or, or in the floor. After you have put your chick, chick tray feeders, you have to put newspaper, newspaper around and put feed on the newspaper so that you have early feeding. So, Make sure that the main, the, main, the main feed system is also available for the one. Maybe the one that you have been using is still also available so that they will use it. Then, when there is feed in the digestive tract, residual yolk will be used more quickly. The moment you give feed and water, the rat makes 20% of the yolk is that the day old umbrella or pullet. It can be used immediately. But if there is no feed, it will remain and that was but the other three days. The digestive tract development faster, go to meet it develop faster. The supply system develops faster in this diagnostic system. And the outcome in Brella is that faster growth, increase ro robustness, and improve breast muscle yield by 10%. That's what they have discovered. These are things that documented, and people typically make this of it to get better results in Brella. Feed available. Don't let chicks run out of feed. Don't let your chicks run out of feed. Feed accessibility. Make sure plenty of feed and supplemented feeders spread throughout the brooding area. With newspaper, make sure the feed available is, is accessible because if there is distance between the feeders, weak chicks or chicks for your breeder flock will not travel far for feed and water. That one we discover also. So that way, make sure that at least one meter rule, the, the distance between the feeders is one meter rule, at least for the first four days or one week. Because we discover that the weak chicks, those that are weak, they don't move very early, or those chicks for your breeder flock. They don't travel too far for feed and water. So you have to make that why you put newspaper. So that if what they are, they will be eating as why you put them. Very important. But people don't know the, about this one. You can see some farmer will discover that. Look at if you are bringing brella, you are using this one at the maybe one week is a problem. So anytime you see your brella is standing struggling for feed, like this one, you can see the leg is sort of on the ground. That means stress himself is, and it's using the energy. To stress that's supposed to use for growth. You can see some because is they even jump inside the feeder. So farm like this. It's for them to have flat tray for the initial stage. You can see some are outside. You can see if, if you look at here, only two birds are inside. Then those birds they can never grow as they're supposed to be. And this is what we say newspaper. These are paper to cover 90% of the breeding area. These are cage, you put your feed on the you put feed on the paper, is that cage. Here you can see, if you look at it closely, you see, see your feeders that you put feed. You can see feed on the newspaper. But if you're using newspaper, you remove it after three, after three days. Don't use newspaper more than three days. Or let chick paper. Chick paper can use for 45 days. But newspaper, use only for three days. And for that first three days, any paper that gets wet, maybe water has fallen it, remove it and change it. And don't use for more than three days. So the boiler will grow very fast. So if you're not using this paper, there's a problem. This, this is a paper attraction. That's why we know this one that we are even importing chick paper. We are the only distributor of chick paper in Nigeria. And we find even by, by default in the demand. Anytime we bring a container finish, this because we know the importance of any feed. You you have this chick paper, you like you lay it close the uh, drinker line. Those that are using drinking line like this, or even you can you, even though you are using chick drinker. You put the paper like this. You cannot put the feed. You put the feed on the paper. You can see them. 
And as they are moving on the paper, though even this one didn't do it very well, because you can see that we won the farmer. You can even see that the, the, these are our paper. You can see even the feet on the floor. So we're supposed to have leave some space so that the feet will not pull on the litter and the pig. So as they move on this thick paper, it's even making noise. All of them are going to be eating to promote early feeding. Because I've told you before, in Brella, early feeding, residual yolk will be used more efficiently, the new track will develop faster, give me the that's what you want. And it's about that faster growth and improved breast, breast meat yield by 14%. That is the result of that one. You just get it free. And this one, after five days, you don't remove it. This litter will even turn to litter by itself. And this is the cheap paper we are bringing for Brela. What are selling? You just roll it down. It's for you to use paper. Even though you don't buy this one, you can use this paper. But other things that remove it. Why you look at here now is that why you're using this newspaper is that when chicks arrive, your farm, 10% will be eating, 10% will be drinking, 10% will be resting, and 10% will be playing. A smart farmer will want the bus, 70% will be there drinking, 25% will be resting and playing. That's why you are using this paper to put all over the place that you want to achieve some example with the eating and drinking. And stimulate feeding, work chicks for first four hours. Every four, first four hours, as you bring the umbrella, you walk them. If there is a cage, you be eating the cage. But if they're on the floor, those are with around the side, every four hours, you walk, you walk so they can start go and eat. You walk gently by the side. That means walk chicks for first four hours because umbrella will feed approximately every four hours. That's why you walk them out. But don't do like this farmer. Look at what you don't want. You get pretty. So by the time you calculate this feed on the floor now, that's the way the bats are losing because they're supposed to use the feed to grow. Refresh feed only two to three times per day. But you know, most workers, they don't care. They will just go and feed the chicken drinker and go and sit down. We listen to music. If you go to some mumu farmer, you see the father, the attendant will be using the airphone that are feeding. You see some farms. So at least you know the center of your farm. If you put it small, go and sit down. If you put it small, go and sit down. 14 hours, you can't finish working for three farms. But most people, they don't go and feed, they go and sit down, they just eat. So, refresh feed at least two to three times per day. And the golden rule is that never allow the feed tray to run empty during breeding. Because I've said before, every drug consuming the first one will convert body weight. That's what I said. That one will be the end feeding. And two hours after arrival of the old chicks at your farm is when you will do crop check. We have said before, we have done it in uh, for layers. You have to do it for Brella also. So because, because crop check, why do you do crop check, crop feed? Is that it's an indicate, it's an important tool in Brella or poultry to make sure the chicks are set to feed and water. That's why you are doing crop feed. Because you want as a farmer like you have something a rest. You want to know where your brella feed and water in two hours. So that you quickly correct it. So it's an important tool to measure chicks access to feed and water. But, and what I would adjust now is that Marina, we have trained you on chick profit. We have trained you on chick quality assessment. Uh, even naval scoring, we have done that for you. So maybe in your next breather, uh, please, always put the result on the platform, please. Two hours, put all the results, the way, and what are we expecting in the next one week? Let me put it on the platform, please. I want to activate the platform for this girl like from, from the next time we are collecting the old things. Let's see all the assessment, your chip quality assessment, your crop check. Let's have it every two hours. Let's have it, please. Because the check assessment is that after two hours, 75% of chicks have full crop. Eight hours, 80%. But if target crop is not achieved, if after two hours you don't have 75, there's something preventing you from eating and drinking, and action will be taken to overcome the situation. But if you just assume it like that, the fact that it's losing, these are things that we are using to check, to check list ourselves and correct what's happening on the any maybe unforeseen many members that we didn't do. Please. And these are forms that we have given you. We can do Marina can design what we call evaluation cross field and indication results on form. You can design this form. Marina farm, that we feel as you now always store, all have a file for that. It's not about a file. 
So that you can even use it as a research. Some people go see how they are doing, even though other people are not there, they come and see the file and they control like that. After some years, you can even use it as a research on the farm. One percent a day, you have several hundred chicks. How I many, if this, if this fly that you can feed and water, if it's high, that is only feed, if it's soft, it's only water, if there's a put number. But at the end of the day, after two hours, you get one. If you have your 45, something's wrong somewhere. Because you are taking that 75 percent after two hours, suppose I have feed and water. If you don't have to the water, some in our what is the problem? Is it the temperature? Is it the is, is it the ventilation? Is it the uh, feeder, wrong feeder, or feeder are not enough? You fully check it, or is, is there a problem with the feed? But then you don't have 75%. Then it will you have to you have you you have to you have to take action to overcome the situation. But if you don't do it, you just say like that. If you if the problem just that losing. Because brother is per hour, every one hour, the present zero point of brother life. So it's not like layers. Layers is a marathon race. There's a time for correction in layer. But brother, every one you lose, you cannot get it back. You cannot get you cannot get it back. But you can get it in layers. If you lose it, at least in layers, you still have 12 foot as an inflation point. But brother, it's not like that. So please, we have to have we have to have the mentality of local power. Out of 11 lessons, I put three. Let's see how we can achieve that three. If we're able to apply that three lessons, I can tell you by next brooding, you get 210. Even though your feet is not even good master, your management can improve. But if the people are doing well, they can easily convert even raw feet to place, to flesh. Very important. I've been training with you before, but I won't share this one. I've done this one before in layer. This brother, this these are chicks because this, these are small, these are big, these are different sizes. By the time you kill them, I kill them. You discover that the seed that is big look at the intestine. The the air that is big look at the intestine. But the air is small look at the intestine. So what is happening is that the intestinal length and weight variation is a factor in the brother production. Intestine is a is a bad feed conversion machine. So as a manager, you start sorting the round to one from the one or one week and feed them separate. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say here now. If you just feed them in the brother that they will go in, you discover that. By the time you want to sell your brother, maybe two kg at six weeks, you discover you still have 10%, 20% that are not rich. Two kg at six weeks. That is a loss for the farm. So you want all of them at least by six weeks, eight if not hundred percent have at the same weight. That was after. If you don't do that one from day one, you discover that the, the, the farm is losing. And look at it. There's no way this one will not grow there. They're not going to catch up. Look at the conversion machine. So that, let's have that one. This one grow before you do grow before you grow before you grow before you grow. So but if you know that, you will not quickly separate it because smaller things will never catch up unless you go to fall behind. So this one will keep on eating the ration of the other one. You separate them. It's your management tool now. In the pen, if you are doing broody, you, you find a way to divide the pen into two. By the time they bring the old chicks, even you as a supervisor, you look at the bad assess it. Oh, I can see smaller one plant here. What is the percentage? Is it two percent? Okay, let me if I open this place, it can take this one. You know, you, you you small, 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 you carry them, you're not going to the moron after them. You're catching them continuously. So, so you're not put stress and then move it. But by one or two weeks, you have separated them. So that by six weeks, they catch up. That's what he said. But if you just look them and look at the back, yeah, there's a problem. So as a manager, as the owner of the farm, if you receive the old chicks, if you are looking at the old chicks, you are look, don't look at the old chicks. Put your mind on the on the conversion machine. If you see someone, but, oh, this is the the data is small. Oh, this is the machine is big. That's what you should look at. Don't look at the old chicks. It's a machine. And I have opened for you. So anytime you see small birds, just have at the back of your mind, this is the intestine. And this bird will not grow. And they will eat seeds. And they will not grow, which is a loss for you. So they will not grow at the time you want to, you want to save them, you want to feed them longer time. Second, it also affects your cycle. Because if you, are, if, you are, if you want to bring another old chicken, you have not fit selling that one, it has destroyed your cycle, which is a loss. As a
So please, I want us to look at that critically. Because, and these are my research at Ademo. The smaller birds, in general, they are the slow eater, but eating birds. And the heavier birds are fast eaters. It has been dotted with crumble feeds. We didn't work on platyzo, we didn't work on macho. We work, it has been dotted with crumble feed that the smaller birds eat for 30 minutes longer on the same amount of feed than the heavier one. So if the heavier one is taking maybe one gram of feed in one minute, the smaller one will take one gram in 30 minutes. So the yield is smaller, 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 smaller. So that one you have to separate them so they have their own ample time. And like I put here, I put here like that. Small chicks will never, ah, small chicks will never catch up unless big one fall behind. So that means they will never catch up unless you remove the big one behind. That's what I was talking about. So you have to remove them, please. Let's let take note of that one. I think we're almost through with our presentation. Then look at the as a farmer. Let's see how we prevent brother health problem. And prevent is based on three pillars: good by security. Please, good by security is very important. Start you up with good quality of chicks. If you have Gomboro, you have Newcastle, that means your by security is poor. Because the first vaccination is by security. Vaccine cannot work when there's pressure. So if you have Gomboro vaccine problem, that means there's high level of pressure of Newcastle and uh, Gomboro on that farm. So it is a rare, so you mentioned that by security will now reduce the pressure of any disease. Then vaccine will not come and work. So good by security is very key. Start off with the good quality of all chicks. Make sure you start with good quality of all chicks. Ajala is a standard place, but you have to work, you have to also know they are bad, you can still convert them to good chicks. Good stockmanship and good environment. Like I say, there is stockmanship, we'll come and look at that one later. Then, Identify brother health problem. Limit farm blindness. Very key. Farm blindness. A lot of even the owner of the farm in Nigeria, eighty percent of the owner they are excursion MD. They are excursion MD. They are they are free, but they are not looking. Excursion. Oh, far far too. So as the owner, and that's why on our farm, even though. I'm on the farm. And we have the same, maybe almost same place with my MD to the farm. We don't talk. Until if you eat a farm around eight, I will not see my MD till four o'clock every day if you go to farm. And if I eat a farm, the manager, I don't want you to see me at all. They're not going to get me till after I go around. So avoid farm blindness. If after I've gone around, now come and talk. Farm blindness is a problem in Nigeria. We have Escotion MD, Escotion manager, Escotion supervisor. We just go around. That was okay. If you go to a farm, like I know Marina Farm, uh, Layer Pen, which is very big. That farm, if you are a supervisor, you are a manager in that farm, and you, you know your work should do low, not a little come, and you spend three hours in one pen. I can tell you, you work. You really work. Because as you enter, because it's up, you have to look down, look up, go like that. It's not just walk like that. So avoid farm blindness. Use your senses when you're going around. You have your eyes, look. You have your nose, smell. You have your hands, touch some bad. You have your ear, listen to the bad that are the coffee. Then, do frequent inspection beside the usual tax. Like survival, no, the survival go and do vaccination. For example, if you do go and do vaccination in a pen. As you are doing vaccination, do other inspection. Look at some other things. Don't put your mind inspection. Don't go and do vaccination. Come out of the farm. No. Look from flock to chicken. Look from flock to chicken. Not just flock. As you enter pen, as you are looking at the bird, the flock, you look at individual bird. If you have 10 in a cell, you must see six out, seven or eight out of 10, even if you do go around. That's the truth. As you are going, that was in that marina farm, if your manager spent three hours to go around, he didn't do work. Take it to a limit. Because in each pair, in each cell, you must see at least seven birds or six in a cell. 
That way you have to know because the band they talk to us, they talk to us, they communicate to us, but we fail to see it. Evaluate band distribution, evaluate dropping. Our bands are large and active. If you don't do like that, you will not know. You just go like a question, please. And these are the tools you have important tools in poetry. Like you have the nose, you have the ear, you have the ear, ear, ears, and then you have the brain, your brain. You not think, you look, you think, and you act. Please, let's avoid excursion. I don't tell you that the brother genetic, like I told genetic have changed from 9.6 kg, now 3.5 to uh, you get two kg in 40 days. So in Brenna, they have worked on the genetic. But the only thing that they have not worked very well on it is the lungs. And that's why Brenna easily come down with CRD. And now it's not, it's not good to keep Brenna and Leia. Even though the Brenna will bring CRD. There's weight. Even if the, if the parts are too weight, so the, the, there's too pressure on the lungs. You know, like you remove Capreto, of a car and put in the truck. That was what happened with Brella. And that's why we advise that as you are using Brella, mental force you be giving it natural, natural, natural product. You can never use red Brella without using mental force. You can look at this oil, it can never. It will even help the breathing very well and they grow very fast. You can't do without it. You can never do red Brella without liver tonic. It's not possible because the nature of the seed is full fat soya. So there's pressure on the lung, on the liver, sorry. So you need lipoprotein like liver tonic for occasionally to be given them. And that will make them to grow very fast. And also if you have CRD, there's talodox that you can apply. That's the drug of choice. And that's talodox is the only talodox in the world that have GMP, as I'm talking to you, because no other one, no other, drug combination calendar that have GMP. It's only the whole over the world. It's only capable they have it. And that's why all over the world, because capable of GMP, that's why they are copy it. Every company is copy it. Even animal care by the talodos care, by the they, they're using the training to sell the product because they use they use uh, lactose as a carrier. And lactose can only get it from meat. That one drug is working. Because you want to think to go to the lung. Is the active ingredient. You want something carried so that can go to the lung very fast. That way they are using, they use lactose. So that's the best drug for CRD. Then Brella also on the go rapid growth. There's rapid growth. So because of rapid growth, you may have paralysis very fast. Because the rapid growth on the on the board. And the board don't grow very fast. And the but the, the brella grows very fast. So you see a lot of paralysis. If you see paralysis, it's because of rapid growth. So that's why I say, don't use iroprososine because it has effect on the cartilage formation. Because when the bats, they cannot walk, they will not even grow also. You see the limping here. That, that is a loss to the farmer. You can see a lot of things we see in the in so far. It's like a two to six percent brain loss due to skeletal uh, issue. If you look at this sometimes in your farm, you may see two percent or one percent because of leg issue. So we are about that. Occasionally, this is a casserole. You can give them in water. They drink that can help them to strengthen the leg very well so they can grow very fast. So the natural product, not antibiotic. You have to supplement once a day. It will help the bug to grow. In fact, most of those big farms, that's what they use, that table, uh, that's what they are using, all this liver tonic, our mental food, that's what they are using. So thank you all for listening. So I'm still your server, so today is Zabawa Getty, and these are my number. So thank you all. Let me. Thank you all. I, I, I've come to the end of my presentation. Let me. So let me. Uh, doctor, this is uh, more than a PhD thesis. <laughs> thank you, sir. Honestly, honestly. Uh, I am short of words to express my my gratitude for this exposure. Uh, uh, you know, this is not my life, but I can tell you, I feel like going to the pens now and uh, looking for what is wrong and what is right. 
Uh, my supervisors are here and uh, the GM has joined online. Yeah, thank you. We have just gotten the first batch. The second batch is coming uh, immediately after the Boxing Day. And a third batch okay. around the 15th of January. If after this training, we are still not able to meet up, then I think we don't deserve to do this. We don't. Honestly. And I can assure you, I will keep you posted on the progress we are making. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, I will keep you posted whether we are getting it right or we are not getting it right. And we must explain why we are not getting it right when we when we are not getting it right. And if we are getting it right, we will say this is what we have changed, this is what we have changed, and this is what we have adopted, arising from the lecture we have had today. Uh, I can't thank you enough. And uh, on behalf of Marina Farms, you are on farm. I thank you from the recesses of my heart uh, for, 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 for doing this for us. Uh, we are not just the uh, GM. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, GM, uh, are you there? GM? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is a challenge. This is yes, a challenge, and you know it is. And you know it yes. is. Uh, immediately you come back, we either make it or we throw it away. I'm telling you, I okay, will provide the leadership to achieve this. And if we okay, don't sir. achieve this, then we are not the professionals that we say we are. Okay, okay thank you very much, sir. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Maybe I'm not Let me call you. GM. I can hear you, sir. Let me go and tell me to go. On. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for the time and uh, all you have uh, given to us. Just like my chairman said, we will do our best in the next batch. Are you hearing me? I can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I've finished. I uh, just to appreciate you for the time you have taken out for this training. And I said that in our next batch, we'll do our best to see, uh, to achieve uh, the best also. And, and what, what, you, I would, what I would suggest, like I've discussed with uh, your, the MD earlier, is that. What I would suggest, you 